pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
issues that uh, had, had occurred there for years with getting adequate and, and uh, appropriate hot water throughout the building. So the new system that we installed actually ties into the domestic hot water system to use those boilers to generate hot water throughout the building. So that's the, the, the bulk of that project. Um, and you can see some of the numbers on there. Uh, it was about a $280,000 total project, about $10,000 in annual energy savings, and, and the maintenance savings that we projected about $7,300. That's kind of a synopsis of that project. The next couple of pages are some information I've already shared with Joe and Peggy in the past, but uh, just a, a highlights from our energy savings report. As part of that project, we actually guaranteed energy savings at Senior Village. Uh, we were focused on the natural gas savings. You can see on this, this, uh, this label, page one, just right after that synopsis page, you will see that there's uh, over at the top right, a bar chart, and that bar chart shows that at the very top, the gold number is $7,300 on the right is the actual energy savings that was achieved compared to $6,300 that we projected or guaranteed in the facility over the course of a year. You also see a small amount in blue that was calculated energy savings. There was some electrical savings at both that building and actually at the uh, road bridge building where we did some insulation. Um, very minimal amount of savings. We didn't track that savings because it was so minimal and, and such a small part of those overall meters. Um, and then the, the maintenance savings that we projected there as well. Um, so uh, the other thing I'll point out on this page is at the bottom right, you see the baseline annual expenditures of $28,309. You also see a weather adjusted baseline, um, which is actually slightly lower than the, the, the actual baseline. And what we've done here is we take into account the, the impact of weather on the utility bills so that we're able to accurately quantify how much savings we led to through the, through the implementation of our project. And what we've essentially said is, if we had never set foot in the Atkinson Senior Village, your utility bills would have gone down by about $3,000 anyway, just because it was a milder year than that baseline period that you looked at. So, uh, and then the very bottom right number, 18392 that was the post-retrofit expenditures on natural gas at the Senior Village. Um, again, about $10,000 less than the baseline period, but about $7,000 less than that, that uh, adjusted baseline. Beyond that, the rest of this, this uh, report really just Again, quantify that data, demonstrate it to you in different ways so that you can, can uh, verify where the savings occurred on a month-to-month -month basis. Uh, you can see on page two, the overall energy costs uh, cumulatively over the, the period where we track the savings. Um, and then below that, the overall uh, dollar savings on a cumulative basis. And you can see that, uh, again, compared to the $6,300 that we had projected in gas savings, we did about $7,300. So it's slightly above. And, and really right in line with really what our what our projections were, we typically, and in this case, did guarantee just slightly less than we would project, and, and this worked out to be right in line with our projections, which is not always the case, but uh, certainly in this case it was. Um, and then the next two pages after that, I'm going to have to go through a lot of detail for you, if you, if you don't want to, certainly, but uh, those just quantify and, and uh, again, give a little more of the, the data that was utilized to calculate the savings. Again, uh, you see on page three, fuel use comparison, um, and then on page four, just some more detailed analysis of that fuel use comparison of the period that we track the savings. So at this point, uh, we, we have completed the, the tracking phase of our, of our project at Senior Village, um, satisfied the, the guarantee level savings that we anticipated. And uh, I guess I, before I go any further, I wanted to see if you had any, any questions for me on, on that or certainly if you want to pick it up, if you would like them to chime in on, I'm sure we'll do that as well. Do you have any additional projected out like further out? Or? <coughs> we, what we would project, it, it, and this, this is a unique case, uh, a lot of the products that we do, there are operational components as well as, as actual facility upgrade components that go into the project. When I say operational components, we're scheduling buildings differently, uh, trying to operate the building in, in such a fashion that we can shut it off at night, shut it off on weekends, etc. Obviously, they get mad if we shut it off at night. So. Uh, over there. So we we obviously have taken any of that into account. Our, our savings in the senior village is strictly based on the efficiency of the equipment itself um, and as we design that equipment. So we would anticipate seeing that same savings replicate going forward. So overall, the project, though it wasn't done for a payback per se in this case, um, we would anticipate about a 15 year total payback, a simple payback based on the, the energy costs and the maintenance cost savings. So that would pay for itself in 15 years. Which it is, is a certainly a very good payback considering that it was a major capital investment type of project. There wasn't really 
kind of the low-hanging fruit that we sometimes see, and those low-hanging fruit a lot of times are, are lighting upgrades and, and uh, building automation control types of systems. So in, in this case, simply by um, taking a leap forward in that, that heating technology, we're able to see that 15 year payback. What's the expected life expectancy of the new system? We would expect 25 to 30 years. Of the and we also did some, some piping upgrades. I didn't mention that, but there was some, there was actually some piping in the facility that had, had deteriorated, so that was replaced as well. And, and we would expect even a longer life out of that, 40 to 50 years of that issue. So there was really nothing installed that we would anticipate having a, a short service life in, in the system. Again, that's not always the case. And, If you don't have any other questions on the savings report, I'm happy to come, come back to it. Right after page six, I, I did put in a couple other examples of some county projects that we've done that were focused more on courthouse facilities. And the reason I, I, I have that in here is I did want to touch base with you guys. I know in the course of my time working with, with Joe on, Joe Bowen, I should say, um, on this, this project, Senior Village, um, I know there's been stated concerns about the heating and cooling systems in the courthouse as well. I don't think I'm, I'm breaking news to you guys there. Um, oh, but I, I did want to kind of gauge your interest. Uh, you know, a lot of the projects that we do, in addition to obviously that, there was grant funding available at the time of the to Senior Village. That, that no longer exists. Um, but many of the projects that we do are, are centered around identifying opportunities to upgrade facilities in an energy efficient fashion and utilizing the energy savings and leveraging those to help pay for the cost of improvements. Um, again, some of the examples I have in here, you see the uh, Nemaha County. This is larger than the courthouse, it also included an annex facility where we upgraded heating and cooling systems at, at the courthouse as well as the annex facility. Also upgraded the windows throughout the courthouse. Uh, I think th those, those two components are things, and talking to Joe, that would probably be viable um, opportunities or certainly needs here in Atchison County. Uh, again, I've got a couple other examples there. Allen County, where we upgraded the cooling system primarily as well as some roofing. And then Jewel County, which is a smaller county, for certain effects, I think all three of these would be slightly smaller counties. The Jewel County is one that uh, I included based on the fact that it was a historic facility and part of our, our responsibilities there, in addition to designing a new system, implementing that system, and, and uh, monitoring that, essentially in, in ensuring the performance of the system, we also handled the, the, the paperwork and, and making sure that they were able to get historic tax credits for that project, maximizing the value of those credits. Um, in, in several of these instances where there is not grant funding available, uh, I mentioned you have the opportunity to leverage energy savings. We're also able to, to uh, identify and, and utilize a Kansas law that allows public entities to implement energy related facility upgrades uh, and, and actually able to finance the cost of those upgrades for technically for a period of up to 30 years. I, I don't normally recommend looking at a period of 30 years. I'm, I'm, I'm on my school board. I know anything that you're looking at that far is. is uh, a bad idea, and in fact, as you said, system lights aren't going to usually extend that far. So normally we're looking in the 10 to 15 year range, um, and what that allows uh, public entities to do is be able to be proactive in addressing these types of measures, heating, cooling systems, windows, lighting, um, items that are related to energy conservation, related to the, the extension of life of your facilities, um, but be able to do that in a, in a way where you're, you're making annual payments rather than trying to buy off of a half million or million dollar chunk simultaneously. And in those instances, uh, you know, the ideal would be that we identify a product that's cash neutral, where essentially what you're saving on the energy and, and maintenance costs are going to make an annual payment um, toward the upgrade, depending on the magnitude of the, the, the items that we would look at, windows or something, that sort of have a longer payback. It may not be a cash neutral product, but it certainly allows you to, to leverage your budget more effectively, utilize those savings, and, and potentially uh, make upgrades that you wouldn't otherwise be able to make in a proactive fashion. You might have to replace a boiler when it fails or um, kind of piecemeal things together because it allows you to, to be proactive, take a holistic approach and can get that problems. So I wanted to introduce that concept and, and I guess share with you if you are interested in, in doing an evaluation, what we do is a, what we call a preliminary engineering audit. Have our engineers do an initial walkthrough facility, you, uh, get access to some utility data and put together an initial report identifying what some of the opportunities would be, doing some cost and savings estimates on your behalf, um, and really starting to lay out some, some different options, different approaches to potentially upgrade facilities. Now, certainly there's, um, there are different levels that can be undertaken, whether it's simply upgrading the existing heating system and, and continue to utilize window units, um, central heating and cooling, and, and again, even within central heating and cooling, there's several subsections that um, are going to have pros and cons that, that would be worth really considering. Before you, before you make a final investment. Um, with the assessments, I mean, what's usually the, is there like a charge for the assessment? No, 
Exactly. You're, you're just, just looking at it, you're just giving us exactly. a bird's eye view of Exactly. Yeah, we, we actually look at a bird's eye view, and we, we'll get a little bit more in sure. depth just because we we want to give you the information, and, and I, I think the way I normally characterize it is we want to give you the information you need to make an informed decision as to a if you would like to proceed with, with doing system design and potential installation, and then b if you decide you want to proceed, try and try and help to, to establish a direction that you want to go with that, whether it's the, the low level let's just replace the boiler with a more efficient boiler or Starting to, to get more um, comprehensive in the scope that you look at. But yeah, we do that at no cost to the county. We have lots of older buildings. We always have <coughs> projects on the horizon. Um, right. I know here at the courthouse, there's been a lot of discussion about boilers, older boiler systems, windows, has been brought up, um, lighting. Um, those are I, could, I consider windows and lighting pretty low hanging fruit personally, but uh, they're kind of something that you can get visually see and get a grasp on it. Absolutely. Yeah, so one work. problem we do have at the courthouse is with the air conditioning, because it's been a problem since I started. We've had so many complaints of the window units, and some people have central air, and it's cost us quite a bit of money when we want some things with air quality that really didn't do us any good. So that is a and also, the two buildings that we have that are old have about the same year of water, and they're 20 some years old. So, they're both a big concern, too. Uh, I mean, I think it lasts 50 years, but uh, they can also, something goes wrong with the major that you know, you probably wouldn't want to put much money into Which, besides the courthouse, but the Memorial Hall and the courthouse are almost identical boilers. I think the Memorial Hall is like two or three years older. Yeah, that's something. Because yeah. the, the valve 
if the software would help, we could go to the same as the one on the other. Yeah, I'm sure that would. And I, 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 I didn't mention that that's part of what we did at the senior village, which was put in a, a whole built water softening system to, to eat some of those issues that they had as well. So, yeah, that's definitely something that we could, could take a look at at the same time. We have the project to implement the project as well. And it may include a window component. We have an architect that's working on that, but the, the windows is kind of an afterthought on the project. I don't know if there's some possibility of partnering with them. Okay, which building is this? Memorial Hall. Yeah, Memorial Hall. Okay. So you guys are doing windows over there right now? Well, or you're here to wait on it for the windows were included because that's the way it looked on there. But I see. It's only the windows over there. I see. Okay. So you're taking the windows out and then replacing the windows and then putting the windows back in. They're putting the windows back in. And we were giving some thought to replacing the windows at the same time. Now, is that building on the historic registry? It is. And that's, frankly, that's probably part of the issue there is that for whatever reason, the State Historical Society, I think any hot button issue they have is windows. To where they, like, I mean, what you're describing having done is what they're generally pretty adamant about doing as opposed to being flexible all in putting in new windows. So this is certainly something we can look at. And we, I think, we had a conversation about Memorial Hall a couple of years ago. Well, that's right. That's right. Right. So certainly that's something we can look at. But that may be a challenge in terms of getting permission from, you don't have to get permission, but if you want to take advantage of tax credits and that sort of thing, you have to go through the process and maybe it could allow for the replacement of windows in a building like that. Again, it could be the same issue at the courthouse. It's just something we'll have to work with them on if we get to that point. Well, the windows that are in there are not the original windows. Okay. That may help. They're very, and I'll have to look at their, talk to them to see, but they're very picky about how they do things. I mean, they may allow you to go back with something that's more similar to the original construction if we can make a case that it will look better and look more authentic. And this discussion we're having is about identical to the discussion we had with the architect. Okay. So I don't know if he's doing that savings calculation and all that. Okay. Info or not. I'm really not trying to cause a problem between the architect and us or anything like that. It's, there was probably, it would seem to me the problem is some money savings that would go along with putting windows back in there, particularly if the labor costs would be reduced. Right. Right. And doing it in one fell swoop, you're saying, as opposed to breaking that into multiple projects. Absolutely. But those, this project at the hall is already, it's going to be in favor of Saturday because everything is going to be to the state. So it will be posted Saturday for the contract. And the bids will be in, I don't remember the date, but the 25th, I believe, is open. So it's pretty late into that project. Sure. Sure. And we did have a lot of trouble with the windows being approved. Yeah. Correct. I mean, kind of given where you're at on that, I think maybe I feel like we should, maybe we don't want to interfere at this point and see what has happened with the bidding. And certainly things can happen once you see the bid. And hopefully they're in line with expectations and everything. But I don't know if I want to interject myself into that equation at this point in time. In the interest of, I'd rather see you get things done than me hold it up with the hope that we can squeeze a couple dollars in savings out of it. And it could be the most important thing to come up with. Definitely see you guys moving forward with projects like that. Right. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, I guess that's all I have. If you guys have questions, I can certainly welcome them. Otherwise, I guess I would ask you to give some consideration as to how you potentially take a look at the facilities and kind of help to generate ideas and kind of a master plan. Yeah. 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 I'm not necessarily asking you to take action at this moment. So what I have is follow up in a few weeks. I'm not going to 
information and everyone is going to be there, isn't it? <laughs> really, you just feel like a speaker. <laughs> it is. It gets really detailed. I mean, did you take that lesson here? Did you take the big speed reading? You started to sell digits at all this website? They typically don't have you do it on it, they have you do it on just public like compilation. Right, but if, if my numbers don't you know. match, so my numbers have to match with Cheryl's, which have to, if they don't all match, then they're calling me and saying, $3 off here. Okay. So, so it's uh, not so much an audit of uh, so to make sure that you spent it correctly, okay. to make sure it was put in the right account and that it matches. All the person, which is my operating statement and my um, general election. So yeah. all the pieces that I get them are matched and Cheryl's information. So they don't. And then they're looking at general because I know an audit they will pull. Right. They're going to tell us to see. Thing. Right. Yeah. But for instance, uh, they'll make sure that uh, oxygen is put in the right category because the reimbursement is different for different kinds of things. Um, to go into our Medicaid rate. So, uh, if I mess with it and put it in one account, they've got to catch it and put it back in one account and so they've got to catch it. Okay. It appears everything to be here. I mean, <coughs> so it's the magic uh, disclaimer about not on any from a technical standpoint, right. um, according to the not express opinion.
great. Yeah. And the only other thing is, I want a signature for a train. I'm going to do it as a webinar. So I get several staff in there.
place it off. Some of them had already been placed, so they just went ahead and eaten the bad ones. Because usually it's just one that goes bad. Occasionally two go bad, same time, occasionally one. Well, that was Ford's policy. They just replaced the one that went bad. They did some others that were bad against them, but they had a hundred bucks.
that it was it was bad. And when I, I met the file, they were filing in 73 when I pulled away in. So was it bad again when these changes happened? Yeah, it was starting. They were doing they they had already done it then. They were around 12 30. Yeah, see, I was headed at about 20 after the war. And right there in between uh, Larry and Martha's voters. Oh, on old 73. I on old 73, know. yeah. No, I, I K9 didn't was all the ones just as bad. I just thought I came on K9. Well, K9. I mean, they've, uh, when you just clear out. It was one of those on the north. Yeah. It was clear across the <coughs> west line lane. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see that few minutes before we open up bids. You want to introduce the yeah. panel? This is Kyle Bank, part of my team specialist. This is Henry Foles, F. C. Lee, and my other one of them.
the only reason is, is because you know I've had a couple of issues and, and I use that card that I have cost like fifty bucks a year. Your computer crashes. That way I don't have to download stuff all the time and back it up and, and it's 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 saved my rear end big time. Yeah. I, I've ever been personally backed up in the cloud also so I thought it was a okay. cloud backup. So. Although if we be careful with where we back our stuff up to we have to put it information. That's true. I mean you have some sort of information but it's not near what the county does. So. Well yeah I understand that that's the if, if that's a if that's a true concern or one that's to be completely off site, uh, another another method would be to back it up to a tape or removal media and the sort of safety deposit box on a daily basis. That would give you a twenty four hour failover. You would have the day the day prior to back up, you take it to the tape the safety deposit box the, the following morning. You can ensure we're doing that every day. Um, safety deposit box, yeah, it's running at the bank, but it's gonna fall it's gonna be pretty well protected. I don't know if that would be the day Yeah. Weekly or whatever's feasible for you guys. The only downfall of that that I've seen over time is businesses seem to get complacent you don't always back it up. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I know small business owners to lose. Like they would have a backup in the computer, not take it out of the computer. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, the, the business goes down and then you've got it. Yeah. That's why I like the, the theory of the cloud. Just oh, yeah. Yeah. It yeah. pushes it. And that's what backing up to my house. Currently, I've made it no one else to do it, no one else to do anything, and just does it every night. Um, <coughs> you so see the dad or you can record it on paper here. No, 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 we do have bids, I just want to call them. We can come back. We can come back this real quick. We got bids posted. We got bids posted. Yeah, we need a motion to go into opening up chemical bids in 2016. So we move this to chair. All in favor, since the same Do you guys want to see the, the letter we put in the paper and all that? I don't know if we just want to see the uh, Is it somewhat like last year? Yeah. We changed. I did it for last year, just changed the date. You see it, you see we're seeing those. Okay. We received three bids out of ten that we sent out for this paper listing. First one is from CPS, which is who won the bid last year. Um, their total bid was eighty-six thousand nine hundred and seventy-nine dollars and sixty cents. Before we finalize, I do want to talk about the CPS, who are very fast, who not very. This one. Okay. Uh, the next one was from Midwest Fertilizer, which is out of Nortonville, which is $89,641.50. Is that, that the first, first year? First year we've ever used CPS. Where were the 
weeds and maybe they can grow. <laughs> no, we can grow grass as well. That would be true. That would be true. Have you reviewed just make sure everything's. No, I haven't mean, looked at them before now. We're going to have to look at them all that. Okay. As I said, we need to make sure that it's apples. Just make sure that they're. Yeah. Well, they don't have a choice. I mean, we choose the chemical and the amount. So all we have to look at is the prices. Okay. It was already set forth. This is the, the chemical we want. Well, I just want to make sure they're wrong because we do get steel bids back where it doesn't meet the criteria. Or what oh, we're really? so oh, it yeah. happens more than we think. They, they modify one thing and they think that that exception, yeah. that exception ends up costing. That's what we average like maybe one, one each time every time we bid stuff out. So there's like one person that bids on average that uses meet the qualifications. I don't know if it's necessarily a spider or just that, you know mm -hmm. mittens or couldn't provide it. I think they just try to test this. Yeah, they're all the same. They're all within close pricing. This one didn't. CPS <coughs> didn't specify their triple core. That can be Remedy or several different brand names. Um, where Midwest. Specify that it would be remedy, which is what we usually sell. <coughs> and panoramic for the next day. <coughs> and the only notation the bottom is different is they said we will hold prices as long as our costs remain the same, we order it all at once. So, it's not a big deal. No skids are showing good for 60 days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because we won't, for the things we won't um, order until after March 1st. <laughs> Not very far away, but yeah. Like yeah, 13. As long as it's a 13. Mm -hmm. What's the budget for doing this? 96,000. So, I knew it was going to go up, and they told me it was, I figured it actually got figured a little higher than what it is, and it's going up. So, just to make sure. But, yeah, we do get more this year, and we may have to reorder it faster guard. Because I mean, faster yeah. guard is hard to hit. But, so. There's been a lot of banks to tour. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I can tell you. I can tell you by that. Yeah. 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 There's going to be a few farmers that don't want to get their taxes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
Hopefully the topology will stay the same, uh, where everything will connect in through one a single firewall, give you a, a secure VPN tunnel to the courthouse and back to each location. Mm -hmm. um, this will enable all your users across all locations to access files uh, to flow between two locations if they need. Uh, this firewall will also give you the ability to remote, remote connect with a laptop or iPad. Um, if, if that's a if that's a business need or a business need, um, and it should provide all the the interconnectivity that you need for your phone system to work correctly. Um, we have a meeting this week with AT and T. Sorry, uh, to discuss options for connection speed and what's available at each site, um, and that way we can. We can identify first with AOS the partner that's working with us uh, on implementing the white phone system and discover discover what we need as far as connection speeds go in each location. Uh, at first glance it appears that everything is sized correctly and should work, but I I've been in the career field long enough that I want a professional to back my opinion and that way it's not just me telling you guys you can you can hear from a trusted source. With uh, the Ubuntu of Posen, uh, we're, we're hoping to repurpose a server that we already have. Uh, shouldn't see shouldn't see an expense there aside from maybe a, a small license expenditure. I just have to look and see what it's licensed for, uh, and use it as your secondary DNS and DHCP and Active Directory server to be located at the Noxious Week facility. Also, I'd like to stand up an internal web server uh, for a support ticket system that we're hoping to implement. We'll allow all county employees to submit email requests if they're having technical difficulties and to generate an email to, to Wes and myself. And we can track response time, we can track what, what issues we're having, uh, and it, it will allow for growth. Uh, so you can say, hey, Mary on the second floor had this issue last week. This is what we did to solve it, and this is the best solution for it. Um, and that way, if you have interdepartmental collaboration and a way to track your issues and, and how you solve them. And how to track what time is being spent in what department. It's really good. So it's going to be a way to say what you guys do and what you guys are for you. Just so you survey how much time you spend in each department. <coughs> it, it also would help identify training needs. If you, if you have a user that, that not being trained to properly run software or a computer program, and you, you have a repeat offender where you have to constantly go back and you're explaining cell phone numbers or rather do something at a PowerPoint presentation, you can say, okay, look, IT spent 12 hours with this user over the course of the year. It might be worth it to spend $50 and show this user how to use PowerPoint or how to use Excel. And it would help you say, okay, this is the money we'll save by my spending the fifty or hundred dollar booster course for this user versus paying somebody to go over there twice, three times a week and and up with an issue. And hopefully with with doing all this we can uh, get them in house training done also. That's one of my goals is to train our users on how to use What are you looking for? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just talking to you. Know, I'm not focusing on you. But <laughs> I'm not talking. So, uh, I'm going to mini goal, mini goal in a day list of a, a project for this year. We're getting started getting them done. Just remember, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. They can be done. I've mastered email. I'm ready to move on. Currently, we show that we're connecting all of our, all of our uh, offices together where they can communicate because now they cannot to hear mm -hmm. a standalone facility so they cannot communicate. What the, like in your uh, out there yeah, in the camp is I, I see you got eight computers. I mean, I'm a full of laptops, so and I can realize I'm only being double laptop. If is with are any of those associated with uh, ambulance? Are they all continuing not just with this? What are they? Are we going to need to get a computer in there? So we have computers in there, and I forgot. I forgot to add into this. So it, they'll, they'll actually be on this side. They will be. Well, you know, because the ambulances, I mean, they have their own software. Yes, we will uh, support their computers, but they have their own software they pay for. So, so the county provides them a computer, and we provide maintenance on that computer, not software, just that computer. And that, uh, we progress it on here. Well, 
No, I just wanted to make sure that they weren't, you know, because, you know, and if, I, I guess when I was, you know, do we need 30 computers at senior in the room? You will with the new, with the new electronic converting. There will be computers not on the walls, not at every room, but, you know, like two per hallway or whatever, and there will be touch screens where they have to go up and they have to enter what medication they have to take to that room. I mean, all they're starting. Can they be like, I don't know, I'll call them a dummy box, but can they be like, they're basically not even like a real, yeah. Can we do that? Those are a lot cheaper. They are a web-based application. They are a web-based application, but they will have to be touch screens because you're not going to mount a keyboard and mouse on the wall. Can you do that with Windows 8? I would suggest the county having any Windows 8 computers for a while. I agree. Okay. I use Windows 8. I have a computer for someone and I started using it and it is just all over again. So, I personally, professionally, we will not have a Windows 8 computer yet. My professional recommendation is 18 months. On the operating system, you wait at least 18 months for when we introduce it. That way, you're not the test subject. They get their bugs worked out and they deploy one, maybe two service packs. Would you like to share that philosophy with my nephew and your brother when new equipment comes out? I'd like to wait two years because they're always going to recall. It's something that they modify. I'm going to buy a new vehicle. Great. I wasn't necessarily suggesting Windows 8, but I wasn't sure if the dummy, I call them dummy boxes. You can use a big monitor, which I think this is what you're talking about. It's a monitor with no brains. It's got a network for it. You can use things like, it really, that is all defined by the software. You have to talk to them and see. Something to check into. That would be some pretty good savings. I sent me a sheet on what the computer requirements were for. I'm going to have to look back at it again because I haven't been to these in years. But we'll have to look. We'll kind of see what they're, I mean, I know that she wants them in here. So now we'll be ordering four laptops for their med cards and their, I can't remember what those cards are called. There's two med cards and there's two other cards that do something else. And we'll bring them slowly. I mean, throughout the year she will upgrade from her current, so 12 computers to 30. They won't be all at once. But, and she may not be 30, she may only be 22 or 25. We don't know. I guess that's what we're estimating that she'll have to be at. Because she also has that computer back in the kitchen for dietary. So. And dedicated fax lines. We still need dedicated fax lines. Fax and support of computer phone system. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's, there's the hospital phone for me. They're there for the summer. And they're always having issues. It's better if you have a dedicated line for fax. I've done my fax line for Metrofax three years ago. I would really like to get a fax. Yeah, it's true. You still get your same phone number. If you send or receive a fax, the other person doesn't know it's coming that way. Instead of paying the 30 bucks a month for a phone line, you pay 7 bucks a month for a service. Why can't you just scan and send an email? That's what I thought. That's what I thought. You have to go to the suit in the court where the courts don't approve. That's right. Yeah, you can receive faxes via email, though, too. Wouldn't that still be the same as security? That's what I do with Metrofax. Yeah. That's a big money saver. Yeah, like you receive it as an email. The only drawback is when you're sending a fax, it doesn't send immediately. You know, it may take two or three minutes to board. The phone rings on the other end, but usually they're not that critical. I mean, if we can get our fax machines, I'm all for it. We don't fax anything. The only reason we have fax machines for medical records is that we have to send them out so that those have to be once again. Via fax machine, you can't do those electronically. There are several of those companies. Metrofax is just the one that I signed up for. We should probably check into that and see if we can eliminate some of those. I agree. Or switch to one fax machine. Some of our apartments have them like that. Switch to one fax in the whole county. The RICO, the RICO is probably multifunctional. They support the LAN fax. And so you could go, you could send out a one fax machine and your end users would know it. They'd be sending fax, they'd send a fax from their computer somewhere like Nitro. You have one center to look at your fax machine. Then it's all automated. It sends it as a PDF. It sends it to the fax machine. The fax machine does all the work. There's no sitting at a console type in the number and waiting. Well, 
what I would do different on the receiver. The receiver would be different. They would just go to that central machine. Well, yeah, you'd have one central number. My setup when it comes in and the email goes out to five different users, so everybody in the office gets an email with a fax on it. So I know who's a fax. Is it 30 bucks a fax on it now? Is that what it is? No, it's probably about 12 bucks a month. Yeah, it's probably about 12 bucks a month. Yeah. Plus the taxes and whatnot. I thought hers was closer to 30. That's what I thought. I thought it was about 30. But you got your maintenance on it. We have a government credit. She might have a credit. Yeah. Isn't it like 12 bucks a line? Isn't that what our government rate is? $1,700 a year. Yeah. It's $1,700 a year. And I don't know if departments could share those. Well, I think you were just talking about like no matter which office you're in, you're basically scanning in. You're essentially like scanning in and sending it through. We've got to be able to get it. I don't know how to type it in. It's coming in and coming into one. Yeah, it's coming in and going to one central machine and going out. Your end user from each workstation can send a fax using the land fax facility that Rico offers. Yeah. 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 Yeah
conferencing and he voice conferencing. I mean, you name it, this guy's in San Francisco. But we're buying those right now, we're getting a secret and it's going to work. Yeah. <coughs> so, yeah. Is this going to be a system that is arranged today and tomorrow's? No, absolutely. No, not open. I'll tell you, if you want to eat XRY2, that would be the case. But Cisco has been around and will continue to be around. They're the, they're the company that's buying up all the smaller companies like that here and three companies. That's, that's Cisco. They're, they're the big fish in the pond. Mm -hmm. And with the five year um, help, the warranty. The five year retention package. Where? Yeah. It's smart. 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 Any available, any update that they become available, which they can also update and provide us, and is paid for with that maintenance agreement that they paid for. Uh, it's also a 24 7 on site, um, which is it's super handy because in the IT field, nobody knows everything. And with, uh, with the Cisco SmartNet, they have somebody there that knows everything. Uh, if it's 10 people, they have it. And with the 24 7 turnaround, they, they'll come on site, free of charge, as part of the smart bed agreement, and they'll fix your issue. Yeah. <coughs> I've done this network the same thing as what Jack and the Farmers have. And they took one. Let me do it. Yeah, they have five sites there. No, they're down to four. They have seven, and now they're four. So they're still twice.
So there's a total of two that you will be interested in. Today. And we got one scheduled for today. Pat, should I put names in there? This is the applicant. Candidates, right? Or applicants, yes. No, don't put their names.